Hey, what's good everybody? It's CJ Beats. We're back at it again today. Today I'm going to show you guys how I created a kick drum out of a small percussion bongo like this. I picked this up for like $6 at the local music store. There's a whole bunch of other percussion pieces that you could buy relatively cheap so that you could record your own sounds and actually make your own drum sounds out of them. So the process that I took in order to record this, so I literally just held this up in front of my microphone and used a pencil to hit the mini bongo, record it, uh, record it directly into Logic, and then I simply picked out the, uh, the take that I wanted to use. Let's have a listen to the recorded sound first, and then I'm gonna show you guys how it sounded like after I used uh, plugins to manipulate it. So this is the original recording. I'll play it a few times. As you can see right now, it doesn't sound anything like a kick drum. Then I used a whole bunch of plugins and made it sound like this. So I'm gonna show you the process that I used uh, in order to make that sound now. So let's solo out that first piece and let's look at this plugin chain that I, uh, that I have on here. So the first thing I did was drop an EQ on this. I'm using the FabFilter Pro EQ. You don't have to use this particular EQ. You can use the Logic Stock or any stock uh, EQ for this. All I did was literally uh, to clean up the sound, chop off uh, a little bit of the low end and a little bit of the high end. The next step uh, that I did was drop four pitch shifters in a row. Each one of these uh, is set to negative 12 semitones and then I brought the mix up by 100. So as I was adding them, uh, this is what it sounded like. This is the first pitch shift. Second. Third. And the fourth and final one. So right now, again, it still doesn't sound anything like a kick drum. It sounds very flat actually, and uh, almost too digital. So the next thing I did was drop another EQ on it, uh, chopped off again the high end up to about uh, 1100 hertz and boosted up a little bit of that 16 hertz range and that was that that made it sound like this the next plugin that i dropped on it was a max bass uh, by waves it's a really awesome plugin to bring bass sounds out of things i picked out the uh, parker kick rx preset and then i boosted that max bass up by 1.4 there's a lot more body to this sound now it has a lot more bottom end and it's sounding a little bit more like a kick drum. The next plugin that I dropped on it was a Sausage Fattener by Dada Life. It boosted up uh, the fatness level about 10%, and that gave it that knock that I was looking for in the kick. I dropped another EQ on top of all of that and started taking away more frequencies. So I dropped that 89, 90 hertz uh, frequency by quite a bit, by about negative 5.22 dB and also again chopped off all the way up to about 1400 hertz. The sound now sounded like this. And last but not least, what I did was drop a, uh, a level meter onto this so that I can see the peak and RMS level. So I'm also trusting my ears, but I wanna see visually where we're at in terms of the peak and the RMS. So the RMS is the perceived loudness and the peak level is the loudness that you see inside of this, uh, this level meter. So, the peak is at around a negative 8.7. That's okay. I want it to like be at around negative, um, negative 10 at the most and uh, negative 18 for the RMS. So we're right in the range there that's still acceptable. As you can see now, it really sounds like a kick drum. The next thing I did was actually bounce this into place so that I can uh, manipulate it a little further. So in order to bounce this into place, all I did was uh, zoom into this here, right click, bounce it into place. And this was the uh, the finished product now. I also dropped an EQ onto this, chopped a little bit of that low end off, about 10 hertz, at around 10 hertz. Uh, more at, uh, chopped out more at the 93 hertz level, and also uh, used the high cut frequency and chopped off uh, some of that, uh, that, that top end again. So right now we have a kick that is in mono. As you browse through sounds through different drum kits, uh, you'll notice that they all are in stereo. What you wanna do in order to uh, turn this into a stereo sound is simply click this uh, bounce in place again. And uh, when you have include volume and pan information checked off, if it is a mono sound, it will actually convert it into a stereo. I turn my normalize off and I usually include the, uh, the audio tail. So if we bounce that into place, what we're left with is a stereo sound kick drum. So there's really no limit to what you could do with sound. As you could see, I turned something that didn't sound like a kick drum at all into a kick drum. 
You could start creating your own drum kits. You could start selling these drum kits. There's endless possibilities what you could do with these sounds that you create. If you guys want to see more videos like this, I'm totally up to it. Make sure to drop a comment below and let me know what you want me to make a sound out of next. So that could be anything. You know, if, if you say, hey, CJ, can you create a hi-hat out of, I don't know, plastic wrap? Hit that comment section. Let me know what you guys want to see. I'm totally up for the challenge. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, you know what to do. Put those in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you're notified anytime I upload some new content. My name is CJ, and I'm out for now. Peace.